Hey Spintronics fans, I've had a request to start a swing flag series for you. I know not everybody gets the chance to do swing flags and not everybody did swing flags whenever they were performing. Sometimes it can be hard to think of things that you want to do with swing flags whenever you're writing choreography. My suggestion would be think of a swing flag as the top half of a flagpole and you only have to use one hand. Think of any basic that you can do with a flag and translate it over to the swing flag. Today I'm going to show you kind of how I made my own swing flags. I just took a 40 inch dowel rod and I started by taping it. I normally like to use electrical tape on my flag poles, but there was really pretty galaxy print duct tape that just seemed to go with the colors I picked out so well. So I went ahead and bought some galaxy print duct tape and I taped down the length of the dowel rod so they won't splinter or anything. You do want to tape inside of the silk, so I taped end to end even though you can't see it here. This way you have less chance of your dowel rod breaking inside the silk, and if it does, it's not gonna be as big of a deal. It'll hold together at least for a little while till you get done performing or whatever. Then I chose two beautiful fabrics, and I purchased two yards of each. I used the short edge here to make my sleeve, and then the long edge I ended up cutting the whole thing in half so that I could have a nice big pair of swing flags. Now this fabric is called Liquid Lame. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they call it. I bought it at Walmart. I'm not sure that that's necessarily what they call it at Walmart. It's metallic something or other. It's very shiny and it's generally using costume material, but I didn't want to use real lame because whenever you use real lame on the sleeve, it's got a much better chance of ripping. This is Blue Organza and it's, also not the most sturdy of fabrics, but it looked really pretty and I liked the blue and the purple together. Now when I stitched my seams, you'll see in the middle here that there are two lines of stitching. Um, I just have a normal sewing machine. I can't do a double needle or anything. What I did was I placed the two fabrics directly on one another and I stitch one seam with, the, with them just laying flat, not folded over or anything. Just stitch one seam down the length and then I folded them once and stitched this side. And then after I did the entire length here, I folded them back again and stitched this side. This way I've got that double seam plus there's a third seam inside. You can't really, you can't see it from here. But this gave it that nice finished edge where you don't have the, the unfinished fabric sticking out and being able to fray off. I do have some threads that are loose there. I didn't go back and cut all my threads or anything. Um, I also used a rolled hem. This way it tucks in all the unfinished edges without me having to sit there and fold it over and fold it over again. So it was very, very easy to make. Also with swing flags, the more body and the more dancing that you do underneath your flags, the better they're gonna look, the better effect they're gonna have. And I always like to say that two is better than one as far as swing flags are concerned, simply because they're gonna give you more color, more effect. With these, the purple is only shiny on one side. Shiny there, not shiny here. So if I have two, I have the opportunity to put them together and have it be shiny on both sides, here and here. Then when I split them apart, I'm just basically flooding the whole field or the whole floor with color. The best way I've found to hold a double swing flag is to take both of them together and roll, put them right next to each other, then roll them one time. This way the ends will be held together by the silk and you can just hold at the handle and not have to worry about trying to keep them together all the time. Then as you do your unroll, which I'll teach you in a later video, you have to untwist them a little bit in order to be able to pull them apart to do the big reveal. So that's all I have for you on swing flags today. Tomorrow I'm going to start doing some actual teaching of swing flag choreography that you can use and hopefully you can use this information to go home and make your own practice set of swing flags or if you want to make a set of swing flags for the entire color guard. It's really inexpensive and a lot of fun. Guys don't forget to subscribe. Just press the little button down here. That way you don't miss any more of my swing flag videos or any of the color guard videos that Ventronics produces. See you next time.